minus or the addition using plus. So for example, if we change mode and let's go with u minus s for example, or u minus w that is, temp 1 million dot text. Let's see how this influences our permissions. Turn to the shell and you need to do this as the owner of the content. So if it's Linux CBT, use that user. Otherwise, it won't work. Now notice that the user who owns the content may no longer write to the file because we indicated the removal of that permission bit. And similarly, let's copy this and make another command. Let's just note removes owner's ability to write to the content. And similarly, this will remove other or everyone's ability. To write to the content. But this will be, of course, O instead of U. Let's try this out. And we'll follow that up with an LSL temp 1 million dot text. So now look in the last three bits, it's set to six or four, that is. So now we've got four, six, four as our permissions. This means that everyone else, which includes Linux CBT, Linux CBT 4, and otherwise, will not be able to write to the content. But any member of the group root will be able to write to the content. So let's drop that permission as well using non-octal. Octal is just simply simpler, but change mod supports both. So change mod G minus W, the same thing, will apply to the group section. So removes groups ability to write to the content. And that's just simply G minus W. So we'll just modify it here. And now the content's set to 444. So it's readable by everyone, but not writable. So how does that impact root? Well, let's nano the file, or at least try to modify it with nano. And let's add 000, and try to save the changes. Now notice we were able to save the changes. Let's head the first five lines from temp 1 million dot text. And the changes were saved. And that's because regardless of what the permissions read, root can always make changes. Let's try to make changes as a user who recently was able to. We'll add four zeros. And of course, we're not able to write and let's try to modify as this user Linux CBT4 adding let's say the same four zeros and of course we're not able to write so you can make changes using change mod using the octal notation or the English equivalent to add or remove just substitute plus to add use minus to remove permissions whether it's read, write, or execute. Now there are specific permissions that are set on directories. For example, let's take a look at our home directory. This user doesn't have anything created, so we'll do so as Linux CBT. We could save the, the file as a different file in the directory that we're able to write to. So notice, for example, this recently created directory 10 million text, or temp3, or temp, or temp2 they all have leading D values indicating that they're directories. But notice that they're also all executable, leading you to believe that perhaps the content is executable or is a script. Directories must be marked executable in order for users to enter them. It's the permission bit that's used to allow access to enter the directory. And then the other bits work the same way they work on files. So the fact that read write is associated with the owner means the owner may read and write. So to enter the directory, the user needs to be able to execute and optionally to be able to read the content in the directory. And then beneath there, you'll see that the other directories have inherited the same permissions. These permissions evaluate to seven, 
seven, five. So that's a default mask that's associated with directories that are created by the user. Let's just copy this example as an example and just denote that it's 775. And oftentimes with applications, you'll find that administrators flag the content 777 so everyone can write, which is not necessarily a good thing, but sometimes it's the quickest way to get the application to work. So default directory permissions is octal 775 because it's read write execute read write execute read blank execute when you tally them up so change mod will do that for you now let's just show you also chown very important tool which changes the ownership on content so the file that we wrote in temp if you recall 1 million dot text is owned by root and the group root let's just lsl it again and indeed, as a consequence of copying it, Red Hat Enterprise wrote the file to the directory with permissions associated with the user with whom we're logged in as. So to change the ownership, let's say, of the owner of the object, we use Chown, or the group of the object, we use Chown. So let's change the ownership of this object to Linux CBT, and of course that will allow the user to be able to write to the content. To change ownership, simply specify the name of the new owner, Linux CBT, on the content. And you can optionally specify the name of the group using a delimiter. So channel Linux CBT temp 1 million dot text, followed by an LSL temp 1 million dot text. This will show momentarily that Linux CBT has become the new owner of the content which now means the user can manipulate the content but notice that the permission is still set to read because we dropped the permission so how does it influence the non-privileged non user's ability to write to the content well let's show you let's try to add a line we'll save the changes doesn't work so only root has that special privilege to bypass or circumvent the published permissions so to influence this, as the non-privileged user, since we own the content, temp 1 million text, we can change the permissions using change mod. Now since we want to grant ourselves the ability to write to the content, we need to add w or 2 to read, which is 4, to make it 6. We can leave the group to 4 and everyone else to 4 or to 0 if we don't want others to access the content. So let's change it, and that has executed successfully. Let's re-LSL. And indeed, Linux CBT now can make changes to the content. So let's exclamation nano to get the most recent instance and try to add that new record and save the changes to temp. And indeed, it writes. And if we head the first, let's say, seven lines from temp one million dot text, indeed, the content has been written. Now this content is still viewable by Linux CBT4. That may or may not be a good thing. That is why there is the ability to remove the ability to read the content from any user. So we know that when Linux CBT4 accesses the content, they do so under the auspices of everyone else. How, how do we know this? Well, let's take a brief look again. Well, LSL temp 1 million dot text. We're currently logged in as Linux CBT4 and that user isn't Linux CBT so when the user attempts to access this file they cannot use the first three permissions bits or bits 2, 3, and 4 because the users don't match and that's the UIDs don't match. Linux CBT4 has a UID of 503 whereas Linux CBT has a UID of 500. Neither will the group permissions bit work 5 and 6 and 7 or 4 5 and 6 because the GID doesn't match 503 doesn't match 0 so that means it's the last three byte last three bits that are being used when anyone else tries to access the content and it's currently set to read which is why Linux CBT4 or any other user for that matter who doesn't match the owner nor the group is able to access the content 
So as the owner of the content, we can remove that permission octally or using the English translation. So for example, change mod, we could do, this is everyone else minus read, that's one way, temp 1 million dot text. And let's follow that up with a stat instead of ls as an alternate means of enumerating permissions associated with the content. This is one way to do it. Another is octally, which would be just 640. So let's try this out as the owner of the content. And now when we take a look at the content, we see that it is flagged 640. It's even translated for us. It's read writable by the UID 500. It's readable by the, U, the GID 0, any member of 0 GID. And no one else may interact with the content. The last three bits are turned off. So this now means that if Linux CBT4 tries to access the content using a recently invoked nano, it'll fail. It gives us a new buffer. It tells us it's not able to read temp 1 million dot text. How about if we try to stat it to get some information on it? That we can do, but we can't see the content. Stat returns metadata, and that isn't harmful. At least, doesn't seem to be harmful because it doesn't reveal the content. It just tells you data about, or gives you data about the data, or it is metadata. So it's read writable by the owner, readable by the group root, and no one else may interact with the content. So there's nothing to stop us from statting it, nor from using LSL to enumerate its presence in the directory temp. But we cannot read the contents. If we try to cat it, for example, were denied as we should be. So now the content is more secure and we could also drop root. We're the owner of the content. We could drop the permissions if we'd like. So we could do G minus R or change mod. We want to be able to read write as the owner and no one else to have access 600, which is typically more secure than other forms of permissions. So 1 million dot text. And then when we're done, let's stat it temp 1 million dot text and this will change the permissions to be 600 which is much more restrictive now this changing of the mode may only be performed by the owner of the content to prove it let's try it in this shell as the user Linux CBT4 doesn't work and we should also add and also by root root can always perform these tasks now let's do it as the owner and now the new stat shows that the permissions associated are 600 so it's now set this leading bit that we haven't discussed in the permission set allows us to define other classifications of permissions like set UID set GID or sticky bits for example with zero it means it's just a regular file which could be directory character block etc so now it's 600, and that means no one else can interact with the file. But again, root can always interact with the file. Temp 1 million dot text. Nothing prevents root, and root can always change the permissions of the file. So let's chown or change mod 644 temp 1 million dot text, and then echo the exit status. And you'll see that there's nothing to prevent that from happening, which means that root is always a vector into content. Now let's take a look by statting temp 1 million dot text and you'll see that it's been flagged 644. And if you compare the timestamp to the axis and change times, you'll see that it was recently touched. So this has been an intro into change mod, chown, the bits of permissions that are associated on Linux systems. We're going to continue our study of these items and look at symlinks and hard links as means of linking to content across your system.